you like, check this out. Ooh. Cheers, everybody. It is July 26th on a Wednesday. You like my ring? <laughs> my hands are disgusting. I'm sorry. But look at this. Okay, hold on. I'm going to take it up. See this? Look at that. Look how well crafted this is. It's so beautiful. My friend Sylvia made these for me. Uh, this as well as these, the earrings. These are Eye of the Tiger, I believe she said. Yes. And there's a tiny blue bead. It's so perfectly well crafted. It's amazing. Everything fits perfectly. That, that ring fits perfectly on this finger. It's just beautiful. I love the blue that she chose. <gasps> and a little bit of copper. Ah, love it. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Um, we've been chatting. But the one thing I didn't show you yet, and it, well, <laughs> I'm just looking at it now. I hadn't seen it. So when I opened the package, I saw this. Um, there's there's a card obviously and it's wrapped in beautiful I guess this is tool uh, and I just saw CC I had fun making Doc McStuffins <laughs> um, it's a story it's a like an inside joke so now I'm gonna open it now I'm okay so Sylvia I know Sylvia is gonna watch this and um, I told her that I hadn't seen the card because I only saw the note in the back but now I'm seeing it. <laughs> I'm already laughing. Uh, she says, I had fun making Doc, Doc McStuffins, even though she was at your expense. I wanted you to have the original along with the embellished one. So glad everything turned out well. Uh, she wanted, she, she had made me a card when I was recovering from surgery. <laughs> Doc Pancreas. <laughs> has been brought in for a consult. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, I remember seeing this and cracking up. This was so cute. So this was the print, I guess. And this, oh, wow, the original is beautiful. Cece, as it turned out, it was more than a dislocated paintbrush. <laughs> My dog, Pancreas, knew it was. Oh, bye. Oh, but I guess Doc Pancreas knew what it was, love Sylvia. <laughs> oh gosh, that's too cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. This is so cool. This <laughs> so cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I need the laugh today, guys. Okay, after many MRIs and X-rays, Jock McStuffins found the dislocated paintbrush. So that's how the story. The story. I'm, I'm telling you the story, y'all. This, this combobulated, but <laughs> uh, she drew a paintbrush embedded in my arm. <laughs> uh, this is the original. <laughs> she wrote. <laughs> Excuse me, Cece. I'm so glad Doc McStuffin was able to diagnose the situation quickly. Love, Sylvia. Oh, gosh. Too precious. Oh, oh my God. So, so she made three originals. <laughs> and she's happy the friends, too. Oh, Cece, Doc McStuffins has figured out the problem. It appears your paintbrush is dislocated from your hand. Not to worry, she can repair the damage and have you in tip-top shape in no time. Oh, if you don't know who Sylvia is, you have to watch Craft Shack uh, live shows. She's always, she's the one manning the the chat room and all that and helps out Heather during the show. And she, she just has such a good sense of humor. That's so funny. So this is Doc McStuffin. Doc, doc. I have a hard time pronouncing this. Duck, not. It's not duck. Doc, doctor, doctor McStuffins. Doc McStuffins. Ah, oh, Sylvia, thank you so much. I, they're so precious. So it's good to have the print because um, I have the actual verbiage that she added when she posted. <laughs> this is too precious. Thank you so much, my friend. I will cherish them. Cherish them. Uh, They'll go on my bulletin board and I have my beautiful ring and my earrings to remember this by. Thank you. And I, I think I vlogged about my other, um, what's it called? Happy mail that I got uh, from Lucy. <laughs> Lucy had sent me a bag of these. 
All I have left is the label. <laughs> I ate it all. It's okay. She's coming next week. So, um, I think she's either going to bring me some more or I know she's going to bring like something sweet. I know her. Lucy, if you haven't, you have to go and buy some now. <laughs> I put you on the spot. Uh, okay. So we're off to a good start already. Oh my gosh. All right. Show and tell portion. I keep dreaming, dreaming about an animation that would, you know, never mind. This is a work in progress. It's something I'm making for someone. Something I'm making for someone. Very descriptive. It's actually uh, a photo that I have stolen from someone's Instagram. She won't mind, I know. And I don't think she watches my vlog, but I could be wrong. But anyways. Uh, it's a picture, it's a cityscape, it's actually a cityscape of Tokyo. It's a sunrise in Tokyo. And it's not finished, there's a lot of details missing, but that bad boy, I have to do it in increments because I do wash, washes over washes over washes. And it dawned on me afterwards that I could have started with the darkest color because I'm using Inktense pencils, which are totally permanent, especially in the way that I'm using them. Because when you use them in, uh, with, in washes, like I dilute the color over a porcelain dish. Like I take my brush and I brush the tip of the pencil and let the color, the color fall onto the porcelain dish. And... Of course, when it dries, it's totally permanent, so I could have gone and put in all the dark areas and then just keep on layering and layering. But I did the opposite. I started with the lightest color, but um, it's definitely not finished, but it's a start. And I'm loving the way it looks already. And I use this. Especially for the tiny, tiny lines, like here, you know? But um, yes, and I'm going to segue into... A project that I want to show you and deep thoughts. <laughs> All right, so uh, I don't know how to start talking about this, but um, I will anyways because I figured out how to get out of an artistic slum. Okay, for me, I, I'm usually super always positive and happy about my art because what I love the most is the process okay not the final result but sometimes you kind of like a project takes a really wrong turn and for me I've decided but that's just me I've decided to put myself out there that's my job that's what I do uh, because I want to inspire people but at the same time not every project that finds its way onto the internet is something that I really like and that's fine. I do it on purpose because that pushes me to do better, to improve all the time. But sometimes I think I should refrain from it because especially if I've had a long bout of dissatisfaction. Again, I'm not saying that what I'm about to show you is ugly, okay? I'm just saying I'm not satisfied with it. And sometimes when you've had that feeling for a long time, whatever you're going to hear, you're going to take the wrong way or it's going to get you deeper into that slum. And what I've discovered works for me in order to surmount that because, um, and again, I, I haven't received any negative comments. That's not, that is not what I'm discussing right now. I'm just saying that when you're in that frame of mind, um, it's very easy to get down on yourself even more. And what I found was this analogy because I've lived it. Uh, when I was younger, I had a really bad car accident. And my first thought after uh, I came to was I'll never drive again. And I always remember my dad saying, you gotta get back behind the wheel now. Do it now because otherwise you're done. You will never drive again. And it made me think, you know, <laughs> I always channel my dad because my dad was very wise man. And so, you know, yesterday was just an accumulation of bad successive projects. Uh, and not really finding the groove in between. Like sometimes, you know, I have a bad one and then I go back up and back, you know, depending on what I do. But it was just, I filmed another video that you'll see in a, you know, in a couple of, 
maybe a few weeks I don't know I don't know when it'll go up but um so I've had like quite a few projects like these where I guess because I had a direction for these projects it didn't turn out the way I wanted to and it got me like in a bad mood and sometimes the camera also bothers me because it just freezes me and so the thinking process is a little different when you're on camera very different and so anyways all this to say that it wasn't going my way and I still put it out there and I think in that case I shouldn't have but maybe I you know what maybe I did right I did I did right by putting it out there because it kind of made me think about that analogy and what I did to go with that analogy is that I turned off the camera I did not look at any social media I didn't want I didn't even want to see how fair uh, how good it was faring in that project like I, I hadn't I didn't read any comments I didn't see anything that night and I just took out my pad and I started putting color on paper and just practicing things and that alone kind of like made me think okay I'm getting back behind the wheel and I'm just like writing so sometimes when you're in a funk it's not even a funk because I am full of ideas of what I want to create so it's not an artistic funk really it's well it's not a loss of mojo it's it's really um about of pity party I know that's not even pity party it's like you're just not happy it's not working it's not working the way you want it to so it's I mean the ideas are there but I can't translate the ideas that are here into here or they're just done in a way that I don't like and so I figured let's do some do something senseless I turned off the camera and I did this this is just a practice of al um, algaes yeah I guess seaweed so because um, I'm testing out some colors because I'm working on my rebranding and uh, my daughter is helping me out with this. So, you know, I there's the page was just full of like little blobs like these. And then I added more paint because I had a lot of paint left over. And then I started just practicing seaweed, all kinds of like shapes. And that was just fun. That was just while I was doing this, I was thinking, and then all of a sudden, I found my groove again, like, you know, like, the movement pleased me, and I was happy the way, with the way it turned out, and I really, really loved it, uh, but <laughs> the reason why I started talking about this brush was for the sunset painting that I showed you, but with this one here, <laughs> okay, so, this is the project that I decided to put up there yesterday, and I don't like it and it's okay again I know every time I vlog I seem to have projects like these but this one it was kind of like you know when you're past the point of no return <laughs> and you keep adding and because you can't stop you're on a roll <laughs> all right so I mean I've posted it so most people have seen this I if you follow me on Instagram you've seen this Medusa or whatever <laughs> But I just wanted to show you that all the hair, whatever it is, I did with this and white gouache. This is not markers. I wouldn't have been able to do this without this brush. This is amazing. Uh, and I had to go over the same lines over and over again because the gouache was mingling with the, with the watercolor. But see, this is a perfect example of I have an idea in my head. <laughs> it did not turn out the way it did. Uh, I did not want to do a C creature but one of my patrons had because I post I posted um I was practicing a face I knew I wanted to do that face again this was inspired by uh one of Jenny's pictures um it doesn't look like her it wasn't intention like I did not want to do her but I just wanted to have like the features and I kind of did like some blobs in the back because I wanted to do pretties uh around her and then I just added blue <laughs> and it just went blue out of control. And so I posted this on my Patreon feed because um, I do pro um, work in progress like these. I share them with my patrons. And <laughs> one of my uh, my patrons had the grid and she goes, oh, yeah, because, because of the bubbles and the blue, she said, oh, she could be like a sea person or something or a mermaid. And I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea. 
So I had in my head Medusa, Medusa, or, you know, um, jellyfish or something like that. So I'm like, what if I turn her into a jellyfish person? <laughs> but I took it like way too far. It was kind of like, you have to keep going. Just a few strands of hair was not enough because it wasn't visible enough. And so I knew I had to put something super busy there so as to have the focus there and not on the bubbles, right? But at one point, it was just like I kept doing a wrong turn and it's like, oh, I got to correct. So I got to add more, I got to add more. I drowned the poor thing. <laughs> I had the, one of my patrons, because I posted the picture after where she said, oh boy, she's going to need a lot of big tweezers for this. <laughs> It made me laugh so hard. It's true. Uh, but I just... Got, okay, so don't look at the picture because also the staff... Can we talk about the big the gold staff? It was not supposed to be gold. It was supposed to be blue, but I had some other paint underneath. Uh, one of Creamer's paint uh, that's really very shimmery. And for some reason it was repelling the blue that I was trying to add on top of that. So the only option that I had was to use ink. So I used my gold mica ink. But um, what I've discovered, though, is that I can make my own shimmery paints. Okay, look around her face. Okay, so see all these dots? This is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's turquoise blue mixed with this. The Iridescent Medium by Windsor Newton. And I love it. Look at this. It's just, woo, it's so shimmery and pretty. And when you hold it up like this, uh, the dark color, the blue color still shines through. Not like, like these. You have to be on a very dark background to see that blue. Light. That blue, like this one is wet, uh, not wet, but it has been wetted, wetted. There's water added to this so that's why it's a little bit dark but it goes like really light I have it on my painting on the wall <clears throat> but this one like stays really like a dark blue so I was very surprised so anyways that but I do love the face I love the way I did the face her eyes I would have liked to have worked on them a little bit but there was no turning back the the dark was already there so I couldn't like bring it back but I love the blue on her face I don't know something I like her face. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. All right. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the watercolor that I did in my last video that I posted yesterday. Yes, yesterday morning. Okay, well, for you, it'll be two days ago. Tuesday morning, because we're Wednesday, but you're watching this on Thursday. You following me? So, remember when I said last week that I had recorded a video for this? So, when I went to sit down on my editing chair, in my editing chair, <laughs> sounds very professional, the footage was gone. <laughs> it's not on my camera, it's not downloaded anywhere, it's gone. At one point, I ran out of uh, room on my cart and I had to delete a whole bunch of footage. And I probably deleted it by the little deleted it by mistake. And so I had to do another one so I could show you. And I don't like it as much. I mean it's it's cute, but I really wanted this one because I like the format of this. I like the rectangular shape there. This is done, so this is the one that you will have seen in the video, and it's a square format. So I've had to adapt the sketch because on the original I had five flowers, so I had a you know, I had to do three because it was too busy and I couldn't do it. Like, I I, I don't know why I bought this journal. <laughs> I should have known. I don't like square format. I don't even like 12 by 12 canvases. I like long-ish stuff. But anyways, it, it worked out well. Uh, I do love this technique and I know that a lot of people liked it too. So uh, it was just a lot of fun to do. I wish I'd shown you the original, though. Darn it! Um, what do I think about this new book? This handbook company book made with fluid paper? And I find that the paint... And again, I'd have to test it 
side by side with the Strathmore uh, journal and the Moleskine journal. Uh, I do say that I like the Moleskine journal because it absorbs really fast. I liked the Strathmore series 400 because of its texture and it does absorb quite well but I don't like a paper like watercolor paper that doesn't accept the paint right away I like my paint to go you know and this one I don't know if if I've imagined it but it seemed to be staying on top a lot before it actually sinks in but like I said I'd have to do more tests I do like the texture though it's it looks more cottony than the Strathmore so maybe there's less sizing although it doesn't absorb I don't know I don't know. I'll have to uh, test it out further. Yes. Plug your ears. Done. Uh, oh, oh, I, I got excited this week because someone sent me some information. Wendy Norman. Um, you know these? They have no names, right? Well, apparently they do. So she was able to track down the colors for these. For the tropical set. Well, that's what she gave me. I didn't research the other ones, but um, okay. I shall show you like this because I can. Okay, number thirteen is grassland. Fourteen is plantain. 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 P l a n t a i n. I'll probably write them up as I speak. Hopefully, uh, number fifteen is the thunderstorm. Sixteen is avocado. So, this one. Uh, 17, I keep using the wrong finger, I'm sorry. I'm not sending you a message or anything. <laughs> 17 is tropical, 18 is rainforest. Uh, then we go from here to here. 19, red parrot, 20, north isle, 21, sunset, 22, lush, 23, wild berry, and 24, cacao. So that's pretty cool. I hate numbers. Like I don't like numbers. It's you know, it's it sounds so much nicer. Oh, I'm gonna add a little bit of rainforest, you know, or cacao. <laughs> ah. You gotta laugh. All right. So I wanted to share that with you because I think it's important to have names instead of numbers. Oh, I lied to you last week. My moleskin journal was in fact finished. It is because the last page that I kept seeing when I was talking about it is the page like it's a dud page. It's just regular paper page. It's the end of the book. So I have three completed journals to date. Very happy about that. But, um, th that's probably all that I have to share with you. Oh, except to say that my 31% off sale is still going on. Uh, you have until this coming Monday to get the watercolor fun with Ellie and Ryder at 31% off. I don't know where I'm going to put it or here, my um, watercolor carving class, or maybe here or here, 31% <laughs> off. That's it. Link will be down below next week. I'm not sure that we're going to have vlogs because as I said, um, I pick up Lucy at the airport on Tuesday. I don't want to jam the camera in her face like I did last year. That was very impolite of me. Very disrespectful, but she didn't seem to mind. Like she didn't say she minded, but I think she was too shy to tell me that she didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> so this year I just want to relax with my company, have fun, art, and we'll see. I, I'll have videos for you. Uh, don't worry. I'm working really hard to uh, film all that I have to film so that I could rest a little bit. But, and you know, we never know. Maybe we'll film. Maybe we'll do something super fun and I'll take the camera. I'm, I have my phone. I use my phone to vlog now. So maybe I'll go on the road. Um, yeah, um, maybe I'll go on the road. Actually, we will go on the road. That's true. Yes, that's true. But um, I do want to go out. Like there's a museum that I'd like to check out while she's here. So yeah, anyways, we'll see. Okay, that's it. I gotta film my vlog for my dear awesome patrons. Thank you so much for watching, for putting up with these kinds of weirdness. 
I uh, appreciate each and every one of you and uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will see you later. Bye!